All right, so this the deal. I'm working on my homeboy's car today, and it's a uh, 2017 Mazda 3. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, there we go, Mazda 3. And Mazda 3 Sport. And what happens is he ended up taking this car to um, to a mechanic to get his brakes done. The brakes for this car, the front are the standard, regular old. Uh, you push in the piston and you slap the new brakes on and you're good to go. But the rear, hold on. The rear is this new contraption that all these car manufacturers are now coming out with. Where it's the electronic brake. And basically what happens is uh, whenever you put the vehicle in park, then your car goes, uh, autom the parking brake automatically engages. it. Um, what what the these mechanic shops are telling people is that um hey man in order to do this the only way that it can be accomplished is if you um you have to hook up this like scanner tool to the vehicle and you have to put it in service mode and retract the um the electronic brake but if you understand how it all works that system works you know that you can bypass using a scanner tool and basically, that's what I'm going to do today. Um, and it don't take much in reference to tools. Um, I did the other side already. And basically, I have my jack. I have a, a T40 Torx, a 13mm socket, a 17mm wrench, 13mm wrench, I have this new thing. I just got this from like Advanced Auto or something. But it's um it's a um, a ratchet wrench, but it can do two um nut sizes on one side. So I'm using that. I also have a another uh, a T30. Um, I use this right here. This is to hold the caliper whenever you uh. Take it off of the um, the rotor, the little assembly right there, so it doesn't fall and break the uh, the hose that connects it. A pair of vice grips. I didn't use them for the other side, but you never know if something's going to be hard to get off. A breaker bar so that I can break the lugs off. Um, a flathead screwdriver. I don't think I use that on the other side except for to take the, the little motor off. A big ass pair of channel locks my impact gun and I just needed a light I also used some anti seize for the um, the glide pins so that uh, because in Maryland it, it gets a lot of snow during the winter so you don't want them those pins to seize up and your brakes end up locking up on you but first I start off by um, let's see if I can set this up somewhere Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take the wheel off. I'm going to break the nuts off first with a breaker bar and then zing them off with my impact gun. And then I'll come back on once I had the car all jacked up and the wheel removed. Alright, so I broke the lug nuts free with uh, my, my little breaker bar. So now I just use the impact gun. To sing them all. And you only got to get the wheel up high enough so that. It's not touching the ground. Just take your lug nuts, set them right here so you don't lose them. Pull the wheel off. Take it in, set it right there. All right, so this is the assembly here. Turn on my light. All right, so this is what we're gonna be removing right here. All right, right there, 
where the tip of my uh, gun is touching, that's the electronic connection for the uh, this electronic parking brake. Um, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off one nut right here and the other nut right here. This releases this caliber. I'll remove this caliber and then once I remove the caliber this uh, the motor for the electronic brake is going to be attached to it. Now before I, I started this I got into the vehicle, this is before I did the other side, before I did anything at all, and I disengaged the emergency brake so that my my wheel would spin freely. Okay, you can disengage it by just don't turn the vehicle on, okay? Just turn it right to the accessory position and then uh, press the um, press or pull up on the uh, emergency brake little button in there. And it'll disengage it. You'll hear it disengage. And you'll have a visual indication on the dash that the uh, parking brake is not engaged. Uh, from there, like I said, you come back here to the rear of the vehicle. You remove the wheel. You remove these two nuts right here. And then I'm going to have to remove the, the um, motor for the electronic parking brake. So I'm going to take these two off. And then I'll come back on the camera. Oh yeah, I forgot to say that in order to take them off, you're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench right here to hold the nut. And you're going to need a 13 on here to remove them. You'll do the same, uh, do the same thing for the bottom nut. 17 to hold the little inner nut and then a 13 to break it free. And the reason you wanna hold it with the 17 is cause it'll start spinning. You don't want it to spin cause you're not gonna take the on thing off. And once I do that, then this whole caliber will come off. Okay, I got the top bolt out that's here and the bottom bolt that was right here out. In order to remove this caliber, you pull it from the bottom and wiggle it out. Hold on. Pull it from the bottom and it should wiggle out for you. Just like that. Okay? When you get that off, oh, I forgot. You got to take off this, um, the, uh, the little plug right there. That's the only way to pull it to where you can get to the screws. So let me take the plug off and I'll be right back. I don't know why I keep forgetting to say stuff, but in order to get this plug out, it's a little tab right there. That little tab, you gotta press it with a, uh, a screwdriver or if you got some strong daggone fingers, and then once you press it, you can pull the whole plug off. All right, be right back. Okay, so uh, that's the plug right there. And like I say, I'm using my dag on uh, drill because y'all know I'm still down for the count because some dirtbag decided to break in my dag on car and steal all my tools and they stole my light. So I have to use the light for my drill. But I, I press this little tab in right here, and once you press the tab in, you just pull that uh, cable off and just set it over there. Okay, the next thing I have to do is on the back of here, it's a screw right there and a screw right there. Those two screws have to come off. All right, so um, I'm going to take those off, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got these loose to the point where I can now. Uh, I should be able to just unscrew them with my hand. And I'm using a T30 to get these out. That's it right there. T30. 
taking it, set it down. And then the other one is right there. Okay, now this whole assembly has to come off. This whole little motor right here. This is inside this plastic housing. And that's where I use a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver. And I stick it under there. And you just gotta pry it up. Just like that. And you don't have to worry about nothing popping out or anything like that. And just keep wiggling it and bam, it's off. Okay, from there, you have uh, on the top of this, this little uh, uh, little spot to place a, a T40. And basically you turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it until you feel it stop. This is what they use the computer for so that it retracts on its own. All right, so it stops. So once it stops, I grab my channel lock and what I'm gonna do with the channel locks is squeeze here. Right here. <clears throat> that pushes this piston back in. Provided I turn that screws up correctly. squeeze anymore okay that means that the uh, piston is fully back into this house right here just like that okay now once the piston is fully back into the housing I can take the motor and put that back on that make sure the holes on it line up sorry I'm using one hand yep I make sure the holes line up and then I take the screws I put those back in I put this screw back in recording this JB right there <laughs> The bowling sensation. The rears are a little bit more involved in the front, just because it has this uh, this motor on here that I had to take off. And once I get them lined up, that screw will go right back in there. I screw that back on. And that one, and then I screw this one back on. I always screw them down with my hand first, that way you don't have to worry about cross the rate or nothing. The video might be a little wonky looking. All right. Set that one back tight. Okay. And from here, I just 
just want to slap my pads on, but I put this little uh, hook in here so it isn't putting stress on the uh, the cable whenever I'm working on the the rest of the part. The the brakes. I got to take the brakes off now. And it just hangs right there. To get the brakes off, the brakes are right here. You just take your screwdriver right there and pull it, and it pop out. And that one has the letters A on it. And then here, take put my screwdriver in there. And I pop that one out. And this one is gotta be Mazda. I guess they're trying to double dummy proof it and put letters on them. Don't matter to me. Uh, another thing I do is I on any areas that slide, I put some anti seize on them. So that's gonna slide on the little groove over there whenever you press the uh, brake. So you just put a little bit of any seize on it so that it don't lock up or seize up once this uh, horrible weather comes for the winter. Just like that. To put them back in there, this little spring right here has to press down. And once it presses down, it'll go right back up in the groove. So, come here. That one on the bottom. That one on the top. Bam. It's right back in there. Right back in place. And I'm going to do the outside one. Do that. Like I said, I put a little bit of uh, anti seize any area that's touching another piece of metal that it's going to slide on. Just like that. And same thing, that little tab has to slide, has to depress first. It'll go right back up and play. That's the bottom. That's the top. Just like that. And then I take this. Caliper goes back on like that. Just like that. This clip, take the clip, press it back down. My screw, take that, screw it in. That, screw it in. I say I always do them by hand first. That's that one. And once I tighten that up, I put the wheel back on and it's done. Good luck. This is not that daggone hard. Don't let them rip you off talking about that scan tool. 2017 Mazda 3. That's the same thing for the Mazda 6 and the rest of them. Catch you later.